techno session of the morning with uh, Leonor Chico from the Instituto de Ciencias de Materiales de Madrid, among other places. Okay. On. So, yeah, it's uh, an institute that belongs to the um, Research Council of Spain, so it's not a university, it's a research center. And uh, this is one institute devoted to material science, so it's uh, physics, chemistry, and also bio-oriented materials. So, um, let me first thank the organizers for inviting me. It has been really a great opportunity to, to be here. Uh, I've learned many things. I wish I knew before and then spend the three weeks instead of, st <laughs> instead of only one. So thanks a lot for, for this. And um, I chose as a topic this um, uh, project is, uh, uh, to see how is it possible to, to produce spin polarized currents in systems just with electric fields. We did several works on this and we started with uh, Graphene, and I chose the topic because it started here. In fact, it was a collaboration in with uh, Andrea Lache from Rufi, and in fact, we talked a lot with Kayo Levenkov and Leandro Lima to help to clarify several of the ideas beyond beyond this uh, this this problem. Besides uh, Andrea, uh, Luis Bray in my institute, and also my former PhD student have been playing roles in the series of works I'm going to summarize here for you. So, um, the, 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 the role of spin orbit in, in several uh, systems and situations is really important. I like, I'm not going to make an advertisement here after five days of this, but uh, what I like to, to, to emphasize is it's nice how from very basic and fundamental problems we've been moving to more applied situations. Everything started like a spin hole effect or topological insulators and all major fermions. And now we are thinking of how to take advantage of these things to, to do uh, applications that are actually made in the lab. That's something that is really fascinating. And um, uh, our goal, or initial goal, was uh, to try to see how, if it is possible to obtain a spin polarized transport in planar systems. So. Um, the idea would be like this, you, you have a material planar and then you put an electric field perpendicular to it. You have some unpolarized current and uh, it goes out and can be polarized. Of course, later on, we are interested in non-planar systems like faults and corrugations that can be done by deforming these, these structures. And uh, the idea is not to use magnetic fields because they are not comfortable, they are not good for the nanoscale, and neither magnetic impurity, so we will preserve time reversal symmetry here. Um, so one of the advantages of having this is besides any spin orbit the coupling that you may have in your material, if you put a double gate, then you can tune this effect. So that will go to the possible uh, device applied oriented uh, application of this, this work. So, uh, what are the magnitudes I'm interested in? As I say, I have an uh, unpolarized current that comes from the uh, left lead and goes and suffers some scattering in a Rasbar region. And the output is an, an imbalance between the spin up current and the spin down current. That's the, the idea. So, <coughs> the quantities that I, I calculate are the conductances, and they are conductances that tell me how they are proportional to the probability that one electron with a spin up in the left lead goes to the uh, right lead and has a different spin, or maybe the same from sigma or sigma prime. So, if I choose one quantization direction, one measurement direction, I have four of these quantities two a spin up, a spin down, and the two spin flip conductances. But the point is that you don't measure those conductances. You measure the currents, if you can, which we've seen is not that easy. So the currents are combinations of these, these conductances. For example, the spin-up current that you get here, the one that we want to be spin-polarized, 
has two components. One is the uh, spin up up, the spin conserved conductance from left to right, and then one spin flip conductance. So those electrons have started with spin down and turn out to be scattered to have spin up. Okay? So <coughs> the spin current would be polarized if the difference between these two spin up and spin down currents in the right lead are different. And this magnitude, the difference between these two currents is the what I call the spin polarization. So it's in units of the quantum of, of conductance. So uh, how did we proceed? Well, maybe we proceed in another way, but how, we, how we wanted to, to show this analysis. Imagine you have a planar system like this one. You have a flat piece of material. You have one privileged direction, which is the electric field. And then you say, well, what symmetries does this thing have? And I can think of three. You can have uh, 180 degrees rotation, C2 rotation, two mirror planes, one along the, the ribbon or the stripe, whatever it is, and one perpendicular to the ribbon at most. Plus, in this case, you also have time reversal symmetry. So let us see if just by symmetry re reasoning we are able to deduce some properties of these. Yes? So I'm, I'm just a little bit confused about the terminology here. You, 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 you're emphasizing that you have time reversal symmetry. Yes. And also there is some scattering, as I understood from Yeah, from because me, me, my system is not perfect. I have one region without a spin orbit. That would be one lead. And then the current comes here. Then there is a region where it's a scattering. I mean, there's some probability that electron goes to the same state or changes state. And this but, is but not back scattering, uh, forward scattering with with spin flip. If you have uh, you have a reflection and transmission, you can have mm. both. In principle, depends on the system. There some there might be some systems in which this is forbidden. Yeah, because but typically with time reversal symmetry, this back scattering is suppressed, uh, just because of of the symmetry. In, in when you have one on only one channel. Maybe, but you have several channels, you will see this is not okay. the case. Uh, this is, uh, and in, in fact, when you have only one channel, you cannot have spin polarization of the current. Uh, channels, I mean, states in the outer lead or in, uh, that may different. Okay. Let me try to proceed. So, uh, in any case, yeah? Okay. I think you're using um, uh, the word scattering in a theoretical sense, right? It's just a transmission problem that you can get, uh, you know, it transmitted and then reflected. Uh, yes. In this sense. yes. I think in this sense, it's completely fine. You have a well defined you know, problem in which the current is be defined in terms of the trace of the amplitudes of the. Uh, yeah, of the scattering matrix or. Green functions, you can do it with wave functions, whatever. So, mm, yeah, l let me continue. So, well, I saw, I saw the symmetries of the systems. I said that I'm going to use time reversal. And then when I want to see the spin projection direction, I I'm, can choose three, in principle, three geometries. Perpendicular to the system, like Seaman-like across the system, transversal direction, or longitudinal to the current. Um, I'm not going to mix directions because this gets crazy, so just uh, up, uh, it would be up all the time, or down. So just for the couple of the students that still are here, hello, um, let me just show what happens when you apply mirror symmetry. This is the only tricky symmetry. For Real space, there's no problem. What you do if you have a mirror plane, like it's in this ribbon, is that you reverse the spatial coordinate perpendicular to the mirror. But you have to be careful with the spin because it's a pseudo vector. And then uh, the sign of the two other coordinates, longitudinal and perpendicular, are the ones that change. The transverse spin is conserved. 
This is the only thing that you have to take in mind. For rotations, everything is fine. So imagine that we now think about the conductances which have the same symmetry as the Hamiltonian. So, um, and in fact, the symmetries of this flake or s small region in which we are applying the the uh, the Rashba induced uh, uh, potential. So, in for this case, with this mirror symmetry, it doesn't invert left and right. So we would relate conductances in the same direction. And if we take the longitudinal or perpendicular direction for the projection of the spin, we see that the signs should change. Okay, so w we have, if we try to measure spins in the systems in, in the longitudinal or the perpendicular direction, there would be no spin polarization because up, up would be equal to down, down. They would cancel in the polarization before and the spin flip conductances also would be canceling in between themselves. And for the other direction, I got no relations, just trivial, so anything could happen. So now I'm going to focus on graphene. Graphene is not particularly good for spin orbit, but we've heard of ways to enhance the value, for example, by putting nearly nearby nickel or gold and uh, lead, whatever. And uh, from a theoretician's viewpoint, is nice because just by changing the width of the ribbon, the, the direction of the ribbon would be like the horizontal one. You see, just by adding one or removing one row, we change the symmetry of the system. This one has longitudinal symmetry. This is the unit cell. This one, just one row less, only has C2. The same with the armchair edges. This is, would be the whole symmetry thing. All the symmetries are present here because it has an odd number of rows that put one or remove one, and then you have only the transverse mirror symmetry. So for a playground, graphene is great. You don't change parameters, you just study different widths and edges, and you have the whole thing. So um, I'm gonna summarize here, because this is a previous work, what we obtained. I've already shown you that in a zigzag ribbon that has this longitudinal symmetry, this is a sketch of the geometry, um, for perpendicular and longitudinal uh, spin projection directions, we had no uh, possible spin polarization of the current because of these symmetries. But in the transverse direction, we, we couldn't find any relationship between them. So in principle, either due to the spin flip or the spin conserved conductances, we may have this polarization of the current. The same you can do with the armchair uh, case that shares this symmetry. And the anti zigzag and anti armchair cases, they can uh, produce a spin polarized current in any spin projection direction. Okay, <coughs> with this information, we want to verify, of course, that this is, is possible. Ah, sorry. I have one question. Uh, for your system, if, if it is a very large nano ribbon, yeah, I understand uh, what you said. For the finite system, uh, what happens? I, I do an infinite calculation in the sense that the leads are infinite. Yeah. So it's only the scattering region, the one that is small. Ah. So um, in, in here the problem would be more if you make very wide ribbons and if you pretend to measure in a very symmetry critical direction. But as you saw in the graph, I'm telling you now, in the transversal spin projection direction, you will always have this effect no matter what symmetry has a system. Okay. So we, of course, verified this with simple tight binding numerical calculations and um, one, just one hop per atom to model the ribbons in the no spin orbit regions. These are the regions where I can define the spin. Uh, that's why I choose this, this as leads. And then the um, crash bat part has this uh, usual shape, the discrete version, and the electric field is hidden there in the, in the lambda uh, rush bat. So Changing the electric field would be changing this parameter. We, we have just one question. 
Yes. Is it working? <coughs> yeah? Yeah. Yes. Uh, so why not picking a material with spin orbit coupling in, in the leads, but not using, not with rush via? Uh, because then the spin is not well defined, and I, I cannot compute these magnitudes properly. Yeah, but the rush bar is the one who makes the spins. Yes, but if you use my my mixing region, which is the the central part. But yeah, but uh, yes. sorry. You know, it's okay. I, I, I'm talking about the, the other spin orbit coupling that are more like for a heavy material. The same like problem. Or exactly the same problem. Okay. So if if you have a stronger spin orbit, then uh, you have to talk about total angular momentum, not spin, and but be a technicality. But when you calculate, this is a a uh, real complication. So it's better to, and in this sense, graphene is good because you can artificially turn on and off, maybe put in not only an electric field, a piece of um, nickel, whatever, to enhance there all these effects. But then outside, I have something that is safe, that conserves a spin, and I can compute this. If you try to do that, then you get a, a mess. And I tell you because we did before. <laughs> reaching these things, yeah. okay? But it's, a, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. So um, let's m let me show some some results. I chose this anti six axis ribbon and um, only rotational symmetry. This is like the cent central part. And what I'm showing here is the conductance as a function of the Fermi level that I'm varying like artificially. These are the spin conserved conductances spin up, spin down, you see they're exactly equal. And then the spin flip conductances have some differences here. But I have to put a large value of the Rasbach coupling to, to see this difference between the, this, these two. And um, why there is this central region where nothing happens? Here you have the polarization versus the energy, and you see that there is a plateau where nothing happens. And this is because you have only one channel in the leads. These are the bands. In blue are the Rashba bands of the equivalent infinite ribbon. And then in black are the, 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 the bands of the contacts. When you have only one, what happens is that one spin goes in one direction and the opposite is cancels, it rotates in a different way, and they, they have no output. You need two, what I call channels, two states, two bands at the output at the right lead in order to get this polarization of the current. For unfortunately, this was not my result. Uh, we obtained it numerically and then found in the literature that it was appeared many years ago. But it's a, a thing to have in mind, because if you put a very I idealistic contact with only one band, then you will never get this. You need something more complicated. Okay, so see this brush bar is huge because the spin projection direction is perpendicular, which is not especially a good idea. Uh, but we wanted to see this symmetry thing. Let me show what happens when we project the spin in a transversal direction. So here you could choose any ribbon, you would have a nice numerical result. You can even turn a little bit down the, the brush bar coupling. And you see that uh, uh, there is a clear di difference between the spin conserved conductances in the zigzag case and the armchair case, and you here have this, the spin polarization. So, yes, the spin projection direction should be as it should be in the transverse direction. And this is can be very simply understood by looking at the Hamiltonian. You have a triple product. If you want to maximize this thing, you have to put the, the, the three vectors in a perpendicular direction. So the current goes along K, this is the spin projection direction, that's the, the field. Okay, so after this, let me, sorry, let me do a one-dimensional interlude. Uh, when we understood these things, uh, my, my student, my former PhD student, Hernan, wanted to revisit carbon nanotubes. He was trying during his PhD to do calculation with the spin orbit and transport, and it was, he was unsuccessful, so he wanted to, to look at this again. And uh, what he uh, decided is to put one double gate and create a rush bar region. For me, it was not a very interesting geometry, you know, because if with this cartoon that I showed before, 
what you have to do is to project all the lattice of the nanotube in a plane and then apply the same kind of reasoning, right? But he wanted to go on and he said, okay, do the calculation to the transversal spin projection direction. No, no, that's better. And he started producing results like this one. This is an armchair nanotube that is like here. You see, if you crunch it in a symmetric way, it may look like a zigzag nano ribbon. And uh, funny enough, he had this polarization because of the difference between the spin up and the spin uh, down conserved conductances. But here you have the difference between the spin flip conductances. It's zero. And it was numerically zero. And I said, oh, so this is funny. I mean, you chose a very symmetric orientation. Do rotate the tube and break that geometrical symmetry and see what happens. And what he found is that this thing was flat, completely flat. He was not able <laughs> to see oscillations because of this rotation of the tube. And we didn't understand that. Uh, and so we started revisiting all the other spin projection directions, like the C or along the field and so on. And we saw, this is very small, but we just for the sake of understanding what was going on. And we realized that there were some symmetries that we missed in the previous reasoning. And um, the story is like this. What you have to do is to consider something that is independent of this electric field plus the, la the, 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 the lattice uh, geometry. You have to operate separately in a spin and real space, as we know that this should be done. So inversion symmetry was not considered before. If you apply inversion symmetry to this Hamiltonian, you have a change of sign here, and then you can compensate with a rotation in spin space. So there are different symmetries for spin and real space. And if you do that, then you can obtain the corresponding symmetry, which is this combination, inversion in real space and rotation in spin space. And we got finally that property that we saw before. And because of this inversion, it didn't depend on the rotation angle. Okay, so uh, why I'm telling this, just to see here that we did all the homework and see so all the, <laughs> all the symmetries of the nanotubes and so on, uh, that there was an ingredient that we used later. We also used this information that he carried on by putting defects in the system. Let us try to enhance the value of the scattering by putting, say, a pair of pentagon heptagon defects, a stone waves defect, or maybe a hydrogen atom in there, and then repeat them, either periodically, either more randomly, and so on. So just uh, a summary of what we uh, found. What we saw is if that you put periodically repeated defects, then you enhance the scattering because of resonant transmission, of course. And then you can open the channels in the nanotube that were closed because in nanotubes you had already two bands at the Fermi energy. But because these nanotubes have the two valleys very separated, you couldn't couple them. With defects, point defects, you can mix those valleys and open the channels closer to the Fermi energy. So with this information, we went back to 3D materials, to graphene and so on, and studied corrugations. Corrugations, we know that by strain is one of the ways of, of tuning the properties of 2D materials. Um, this is nice because they can be done experimentally in a very uh, nice and clean way. This is almost a periodic graph uh, uh, undulated surface. And you either by putting in a substrate, cooling, whatever, you can produce or undul undulations like this or separated wrinkles that are in a plane. Both of them are interesting. And this is what we have been lately studying because an, a corrugation uh, uh, is like a, a rasva field, if you want. What you're doing when you're folding a system like graphene is pushing the orbital somehow and creating a, an electric dipole, an electric field perpendicular to the surface. So without gates, you can also have rasva regions in an undulation like this and explore what we've done before. Okay? But 
<coughs> experimentalists are also able to use multiple gates. So you can furthermore tune these things by putting the multiple gates on graphene, on a graphene on a nanoribbon, and choose either positive and negative rough regions and see what happens there. So um, we model these systems. This is what we did initially before all this uh, tube interlude. And we studied what happens if you put an extra spacer without a spin orbit in with wind. This would be one fold, there's some region without curvature, and then you have another curvature region. Or uh, you may have like bubbles, one region with one curvature, flat, and then another bubble. So just by looking at this, you see there are two types of symmetries here. One of the systems are invariant under the interchange of the current direction. If you go from left to right, here and in the two top uh, cases, you always find first the positive rasva. Whereas here, you change the spin, the current direction, and then you change the appearance of the rasva regions. And this, of course, will be, as you can imagine, related to, to, to different symmetries as well. So even though we were more focused here on trying to enhance the, the, the polarization, I will show the results, we also explored the symmetries related to these different uh, cases. And in this part, the study in the nanotubes was helpful because we needed to do this kind of separation of symmetries in order to understand what was going on. So um, let me show just in a, in a glance the, um, the results for one left-right symmetric, that would be one positive region, one spacer, and another positive region with Rasva. And the same system, but inverting the electric field. You see that here, the spin-conserved conductance are different, where here, are the spin flick conductances the ones that are not equal and give rise to the spin polarization. So this is clearly uh, uh, due to the different symmetries of the two systems. So um, just now with the idea of maximizing this effect, what we did is to try to uh, either increase the spacer or repeat more periods, etc. We have here the cases with the same sign and different sign, and we see this better to have the same sign. Compare this um, case here with this uh, other one. So it's the black and this green black. Uh, they have different signs, but you see that the maxima are always for this case. And if you increase the spacer, it depends. We have to be more careful. But the more regions you put, the more complicated the curves <laughs> are. So we decided to do an integrated polarization, just to take the absolute value and integrate in a given interval to see if this polarization was larger. And then let me just summarize. Uh, yes, it's better to have spacers, but it saturates. When they are too large, then they reach a almost val uh, maximum value or goes a little bit down. And, uh, these are the differences of the symmetry. I have to show them uh, because of this difference of, of, of uh, left and right uh, cases, symmetric cases. And with this, um, I'm, I'm concluding. I mean, we've been using this kind of symmetry reasoning and uh, to predict the polarization of currents in different systems. We have found that you need to consider this uh, spin and space uh, and real space uh, symmetries in separately, not the same operation for both of them. And it is important to have either defects or corrugations in order to enhance the, the effect. In, in particular, periodic arrays are better. So, of course, this is, uh, has been done for graphene, but uh, more importantly, it will be uh, to use other materials with more spin orbit interaction, like um, Stanin, Germanin, transition metal decalcogenides. And this is the funding, the papers they have summarized in order to reach the final paper. And, and um, that's all. Thank you for, for your attention.
So for the spin polarization, what is the direction? What fixes the direction of the polarization? Because the leads are unpolarized, so you could choose whatever direction for the... That would be a third step, that is the measurement procedure. You have to measure the, the, the spin in 